Now I have a tradition when I'm learning any programming language, whether it be C++ or Visual Basic or Delphi, or in this case, Objective-C. And that is the first program I write in any programming language is always a coin flipping simulator. Now there's a few reasons for this, the first one being that it's much less boring than writing a Hello World application that does essentially nothing, and it's also not that much harder. And the second reason is, it demonstrates the basic functions you'll need to develop any program, and that's getting data to the interface, getting data from the interface, and manipulating the interface. So, on this, the third episode of Hot Cocoa, we will be building a coin flipping simulator, and we'll find out just how random computers really are. <laughs> The first thing we need to do to create our coin flipping simulation program is to open up Xcode and create a new project. And we want to make a Cocoa application and we are going to call this Cocoa application Coin Flipper. There we go. Aha. Now we have our Coin Flipper application. Now, this is what it's going to look like in the end. And as you can see, we will need four labels, four text fields, and two level indicators, and a button. So we're going to go and create our interface in Interface Builder. You could say we're going to build our interface, in fact. So, we're going to hide Xcode so it's not distracting. And we don't need that right now. Alright, so let's get the labels set up first. Here are labels. We need one, two, three, four labels. One of those labels is going to be heads. One of those labels is going to be tails. One is going to be number of flips. And one is going to be current flip. And we'll just sort of place these wherever. We'll line them up more. More bread rare later. Oh, I didn't know you could do that. You can drag it off here and it'll go poof. Just like you can off the dock. I didn't even know you could do that. Alrighty. Now we need text field. Oops. We need text fields. Here they are. We need four of them. One, two, three, and a four. And one of those goes about here. One of those goes out here. Move that down. Stick one of those right about there. And stick that there. And put another one there. And those lines, all these lines that appear when you're moving stuff around, is to help you adhere to the Apple Human Interface Guidelines, or the Apple HIG. Which basically uh, gives the rules for why applications from Apple look so darn pretty. And, you know, other user interface stuff. We need a button. There's our button. We're going to name that button Start. We're going to label it Start. And we need a level indicator two of them. There's one. There's two. And we'll stick that. I need to move these down. Slip and move them down. Move that down. Stick it right in there. Move that down a bit. Stick that there. And put that there. And we'll just stretch that out a bit. Stretch that out a bit. Stick one of these here. And stick one of them there. And actually, let's make these just a tad bit longer. And same with these, so they all line up. These not even old sticker button. Right there. And there we go. Now, as you can see, it doesn't look quite like our example, and that's because we need to change some of the attributes for 
some of these objects. We do that by going to the Ig Inspector and under the Attributes tab. First we want to change these to have rounded corners like that and again like that and we want these to not be segmented so we're going to change the tile from dis the style from discrete to continuous and again and there we have our interface now while we are in interface builder we also want to add an object that we use to control our application so we just want a generic object and there's our generic dot. We're going to just stick that in there and we'll get back to that one later. So we're going to save our interface and close this for now and go back to Xcode. Now we need to create a class for that object that, this cr that we just created, um, an app controller. And what this app controller is going to do is handle all of the interfacing between um, the interface and your code pretty much and um, the product does come with one code file main.m um, if you're writing a console application this is where you put all your code however since we are not writing a console application we are writing a uh, an interface based GUI application we will be making our own class and generally if you're making a GUI application you you hardly ever write anything in main so we're going to need a new file. We want an Objective-C class. And we are going to name that class App Controller. And here's our App Controller. And I just like to put it up in classes just to keep it organized. But it doesn't really matter. And here is our empty header. Now in this first part, under the interface between this curly bracket and this curly bracket is where we are going to um, put all of our outlets and what outlets are there you can think of them as sort of like pipes or tubes like the internets are made of um, that you can send messages back and forth between the controller where all the code is stored and the elements on the interface itself like text fields and progress indicators and buttons so we're going to create uh, IB outlets IB standing for interface builder for all of the objects on our interface text field and we're going to call it head num field now this is just an example that we're going to use so I get started. Now IB outlet here, that is basically a clue for interface builder that when it reads this uh, app controller.h file to say, hey, here's an outlet that you can link to stuff. Um, Xcode itself pretty much ignores it, but it um, it's like a tag for interface builder, so it knows that that's an outlet. And then NS text field is the uh, object type that we're going to create and then this is the name of that object so I'm going to go ahead and just copy and paste the rest of these in here so I went and filled in the rest of our header file here and you can see we have um, an NS text field outlet for all of our text fields and just a matter of notation they all end in field um, it's just a useful way to describe what they are. You don't really have to name them that, but it comes in handy. And then we have two level indicator outlets and a button outlet. And you know, it's level, level, and we're going to call that a button. And down here, this is where also where we declare global variables within this interface um, that we're defining in the class. And we have a heads num integer, which is where we are going to put the number of heads the number of times the simulated coin lands on heads and the number of times it lands on tails and the number of times we want to flip the coin and which flip number we're currently on as far as our count is concerned and then a boolean uh, called is flipping which is basically going to tell us whether or not we're currently running the action now down here outside of this curly bracket which defines the interface here 
from there to there, we have an IB action. Now, actions are sort of um, the companions, if you will, to outlets in that an action is what you link something to if you want it to do something. Um, usually this would be a button. If you click on it and it's linked to an action, it will run that method. In this case, we have an IB action called start flipping, which is going to start our program. We also have another method that we defined ourselves, which is called run flipper, which is where the actual flipping code is going to be. Just keep it in its own method. And we'll have that return void since it doesn't need to return anything. Now over in the, if we click this button here, over in the M file, in the main code file, it is currently blank. What we're going to need to do is implement these functions that we just named here. Now the nice and easy thing is, in order to implement them, all you have to do is copy that without the semicolon into here, make some room, paste, add a curly bracket, and add another curly bracket. And there you go. Now we have that method there that we can start writing code for. And we will do the same thing with the run flipper. And a curly bracket. And another curly bracket. Now, we are going to add the code in here for the uh, flipping program. So I've gone ahead and filled in the the basic code that we're going to use. And let's just walk through it. We have first the s random function which seeds the random number generator with the current time. That's a way of making sure that the random number is really as random as it possibly can be. Um, we declare an integer called side, which is where we're going to store the random value that we generate. Um, we initialize our variables here, make sure they're all zero, especially our counter, very important. And then we set flip number to whatever integer value the user has put into the flip number field. And that's where you type in um, how many times you want to flip the coin. And then we have our while loop here, which is actually does a lot of the work. And we want to check while is flipping is true, and while current number is less than flip number. Now basically what we're checking is this first part, is flipping true? We're checking to see um, whether we still want to continue running this, or whether the user has decided to stop before it's done by clicking the button and by clicking the uh, stop button, setting it to false, and then we'd exit the loop. And also for our counter over here, we only want to run it for as many times as flip number is. So we're comparing them, and so long as current number is less than the num total number of times we want to flip, we're good, and we're going to run it again. Down here, we're actually deciding which side it's going to flip to. And this is sort of a, a neat thing that you can do with random. So we have the random uh, call here. This is a C function, just like S random is. Um, you can tell the difference because they don't have brackets around them. If they had brackets around them, they'd be an on objective C uh, method. If they don't have brackets around them, they're usually a C function. What we have here is if you call random, and then use the modulus, which returns the remainder of a division operation, the modulus uh, operator here, it's the percent sign. And then uh, you can put any number here that you want. Here we're using two because we want it to return either a one, well actually, it's going to return either a zero or a one. It'll return up to this number here, minus one, whatever random number. So say you wanted to um, get a random number between 1 and 100. You'd put 100 in there and then add 1 to it. So that way you'd get a random number between 1 and 100, because otherwise you'd get a random number between 0 and 99. But here we have 2. So we get a random number either uh, 0 or 1. And we say if side is 0, we're going to count that as a heads. And add 1, we're going to increment heads, add 1 to heads. 
and otherwise if it's one or any other any other number for that matter but it shouldn't be um, if it's one we're going to add one to tails and then we're going to increment which number we're working on and then run it again and again and again and again until we have all of the heads and tails that we want and then once the loop is done we will set the, tar the start button's title back to start and change is slipping to false because we are done now this code is sort of incomplete and the reason why I stopped here instead of uh, showing you the full code at first is because generally when you got a program you don't want to write the whole thing all at once because that makes it really hard to debug because the more lines of code you write before you test it and if there's a bug then that means it could be in any one of those lines of codes and usually it'll give you a hint as to where it is but it's not always uh, showing you exactly what the problem is so it's best to write it incrementally like 10 lines at a time or one section at a time test it write another section test it again that way if something breaks you know it's in the last section that you added and that the rest of the code is fine so we need to go back into the interface now this is where the fun linking stuff starts first we need to tell this object that we want it let me close this and remove clutter we want to tell this that it's a an app controller and not just a generic object we need to give it an identity which oddly enough is under the identity tab so we're gonna call that an app controller oh and even named it here and you can see all of your actions here and all of your outlets here now how you link outlets are you hold down the control key and drag from the controller to whatever you want to link the outlet to so going to go to there first and that's the heads level and that's the tails level and that's the uh, doo -doo -doo, that is heads num field and this is tails num field and this is uh, flip num field <laughs> and this is current flip field and one last one to the button that is our start button now in order to link the action what we wanted the start button to do you do it the other way around so you hold down the control key start from the start button and drag to the app controller and link it to that action now we're going to save all of that and we can close interface builder this is the uh, code that's actually linked to the button and this is what runs when you click the button which is basically if it's false set the title of the button to stop start the flipping um, else if it's true so that to start or else else if it's already flipping set it to start and then set it is flipping to false now in order to run this method here we need to call it as self run flipper I'm going to give the dolphin and basically we're sending a message to itself to run the flipper which is yeah <laughs> it sounds weird run flipper run um, <laughs> we're calling this method uh, by sending message to itself now what we want to do is add the code that actually updates it for the uh, update the interface so we can see what we're doing and you know show the user it would be nice to show the user what they wanted so let's add that code now so now I've gone through and added the code right here that's all of these lines that actually um, takes what we've done here in the code and prints it out to the interface so these two lines here set the integer value of tails num field and heads num field to the variable to whatever the variables tails num and heads num and these are for the levels so we're setting its max value which is the the maximum value that the progress thingy can hold and then we're setting the integer value of it to heads num basically it's just uh, whatever the percentage heads num is of current num it'll display that in a nice little bar graph and same thing for tails and then down at the bottom we're going to have a current flip field with our current number and we'll update that and while we're at it I have also added this 
There it is, the a awake from nib function. Now, this is actually declared in NS object. We're overwriting it. We're making our own version of it. And this gets run whenever you, the interface of um, of your application is first loaded. So when the program first starts, basically, is when this will run. And here we're just uh, initializing the is flipping variable to false. Because it's not running when we start it. You have to press the button first. So we're going to run our program. And cross your fingers. Let's see, number of flips. Let's go with 100. Start. Up, oh, there we go. Let's go with 1,000. Ah, yay! 10,000? Yay! Uh, how many is that? 100,000. Slightly less, yay. You know, it kind of got stuck there for a second. And a million? Well, huh, look, it locked up. Why did it do that? I know. See, the problem is our application runs in a single thread. All it's, uh, this is all running in a in one thread and what happens is while it's stuck in this while loop um, it doesn't have time to update the interface so the interface even though the program hasn't frozen the interface looks locked up the user can't do anything and the program shows no output even though we are updating it here it's not showing it so what I'm going to introduce you to which will become very handy if you're doing anything that's like CPU intensive and you want to break it off is NS thread basically what NS thread does is instead of calling it directly we're going to call we're going to create a thread which is basically we're going to separate out the run flipper and run that separately simultaneously while we update the interface so that way if the user wants to abort they say they've They've told her to flip 20 billion times, and it's taking their computer hours and hours, and they're like, forget it, I don't care whether it flips a billion times, and they want to hit stop. If it was only just one thread, they wouldn't be able to hit stop, because the interface wouldn't be refreshing. But with threads, now they can hit stop. So this is how you start a new NS thread. NS thread, T-H-R, there we go. Uh, detach new thread selector and the selector would you say at selector that's the name of the function that you want to separate so in this case it's run flipper run flipper and to target and the target in this case is self because we want to break it off from here and with argument is or with object is nil because we're not doing it with an object and there we go now, if we just ran it now, I will show you what happens. And we need the console again. Thank you, Xcode, for consistently not showing it to me. Say we do 100 flips. Now, you'll see it did update the interface, but we have a lot of errors in here. And what all those errors are, it says NS auto, NS auto release no pool. And uh, there's no pool in place. It says it's just leaking. Basically, by creating a thread, but not creating a place to put the objects, not creating a place to put these objects in it, we created a very large memory leak in our program. So what we want is an NS auto release pool. And this is how we declare that, auto release pool. And we're just going to name it pool, P-O-O-L. And we create that the same way I showed you in episode two. Auto release pool with the alloc and the init functions. So we've just created a pool, and in this, it's like a it's a memory pool basically, where all of all of our um our variables and objects and such that we're working on is here. They're going to get stuck in that section of memory, so they have they have a nice big pool reserved just for them, and then. Once this function is done running, we want to release that pool so we don't end up using a memory that we don't need. So, oddly enough, we're going to drain the pool by calling pool drain. And that should get rid of that error. And we'll run it again. 
and console. Maybe it's screen resolution it doesn't like. So we'll do it a hundred times. Oh, there we go. I was too fast, but no more errors. A thousand times? Oh, still too fast. Uh, Ten thousand? Yeah. Hundred thousand. There we go. Now you can get to see it. And that'll complete. And we'll do a million. And as you can see, everything on the form is updating nice and neatly. And when you hit the stop button, it actually stops. So that is our very first program. Now, this is a lot of code for a first program, and it, it demonstrates a lot of things. But in doing this, you, you end up learning a lot more than just writing a hello world, which doesn't really teach you anything. Um, now, with these basic steps, you can create pretty much any program you want. The linking, you'll do that in pretty much every program. Um, threads, you'll do in a lot of programs. And learning how to write stuff to and from the interface, you'll do that in a lot of programs. In pretty much all programs, actually. And all of this code you can download from the, uh, I'll post the entire project. You can just download the whole project as a zip file. I'll post that. Uh, to the hotcoco.lastedit.com blog, the blog entry for this post, and you can go and check that out for yourself and sort of poke around in it, you know, try things, break it, fix it, try it out on your own. Coming up in next week's episode, we will take a look at core data, which is writing a database program running at databases, cool stuff like that. How to keep track of your Halloween candy that you are likely getting tonight or tomorrow. Maybe the day before, depends on when this comes out. But assuming you still have candy in a week from now, we'll show you how to categorize it. Coming up in the next episode of Hot Coco. See you next time. I'm <laughs> <laughs>